OpenAI just made an announcement that they're going to preview their voice engine. They're talking about the good, the bad, and the ugly, as in the damage that something like this could do. This comes with a few warnings. We're heading into election season here in the US, as well as a lot of, as well as many big kind of important elections across the world. So obviously things like this are cause for concern, but let's dive into what voice engine can do. So here's the reference audio. So this is the input that we're giving it. Going. It's the voice that gets you going, gets the people going. It's provocative. And here's a Spanish. Faltaban cinco joyas en el cofre del tesoro. Cuatro monedas más cinco joyas. The Spanish is like twice as loud as the English, which, um, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll stop myself right there. Is a push or pull that can make an object move. But that's the reference audio. That's the input. So you record your voice, 15 seconds of audio, right? And then we're able to generate the following audio. So generate audio, that's the AI produced voices based on that sample. So here's a sample from biology. Some of the most amazing habitats on Earth are found in the rain. A rainforest is a place with a lot of precipitation. Translating content like videos and podcasts so creators and businesses can reach more people around the world fluently and in their own voices. One early adopter of this is HeyGen. An AI visual storytelling platform. We're gonna look at HeyGen in just a second. I got some, uh, I got some demos of of HeyGen that I, I kind of been meaning to show for a while, but um, this uh, th this seems like a perfect time to do so. So here's the reference audio. So the the input, the original voice, the human voice. Friendship is a universal treasure. It brings joy, support, and laughter into our lives, no matter where we are in the world. True friends stand by us through thick and thin, sharing our joys and easing our sorrows. Let's celebrate the. All right, and here's that translated into Spanish. La amistad es un tesoro universal. Aporta alegría, apoyo y risas a nuestras vidas sin importar. Mandarin. German. Freundschaft ist ein universeller Schatz. Sie bringt Freude, Unterstützung und Lachen in unser Leben. French. L'amitié est un trésor universel. D'où que nous venons, elle apporte joie, soutien et... Japanese. Speaking of which, I'm starting a brand new channel. It's the German version of this. Here's kind of what that looks like. Willst du bis der Tod euch scheidet treu ihr sein für alle Tage? Willst du bis der Tod euch scheidet treu ihr sein für alle Tage? Du, du hast, du hast mich, du, du hast, du hast mich. Bonjour, mes. Pretty good, right? I'm also doing French. Bonjour, mes chers amis. Je suis le légendaire Fantomas, le maître du crime et du déguisement. Après avoir semé la terreur en France pendant des années, j'ai décidé de traverser l'Atlantique pour étendre mon empire criminel. Aujourd'hui, je me cache derrière l'identité de Wes Roth, un homme d'affaires prospère et respecté. Personne ne soupçonne que derrière ce mat. You didn't know I could speak that well, did you? I can also do Russian. Меня зовут Василий Зайцев, и я считаю, что «Враг у ворот» — это лучший фильм американского кинематографа, когда-либо созданный. Yeah, I said it. And after making that soy milk comment in my last video, I decided to learn Spanish as well. Hola, soy Wes. Siempre fui un gran fan de Better Call Saul. Y debo admitir que el personaje de Lalo me cautivó completamente. Su carisma y forma de hablar me inspiraron tanto que decidí aprender español. Yeah, so I'm saying that Lalo from, from Better Call Saul was so such an amazing character and so charismatic that I decided to learn Spanish. Now, I've also generated lots of other ones. Now, obviously, sorry, if, if it wasn't clear, that was obviously AI generated. I don't speak those languages. That was me. I uploaded a video of me talking to the camera, using my real voice, talking about something else in English. I think probably was somewhere around 30 minutes of, of video. And then it would be able to output those voices in whatever language. I've also tested Mandarin, Japanese, Vietnamese, and Thai, as well as a few other ones. But for all those, I tried to run them past native speakers to see how good they were, right? So the consensus of the ones that I showed you was that they were, you know, either excellent or at least good, right? So no complaints, really. But I know that the Thai and the Vietnamese didn't quite nail it for the, um, for the, Vietnamese and Thai speakers that I, I've asked to kind of give me feedback on it. So, so I'm curious, if you speak Mandarin or Japanese, how does this sound? Is this... I mean, sounds good to me. I don't, I don't speak Chinese. I don't speak Mandarin, but I mean, I, I hear it spoken. So that whole chi, that the, the, I can't say it. So I apologize. The chi, the the tonalities are, I think, to most.
most people to non-speakers are really complicated. So I'd be curious to know if you speak it, leave a comment. Is that good Mandarin? Is that good Japanese? La amistad es un tesoro universal. Aporta alegría, apoyo y risas a nuestras vidas sin importar donde estemos en el mundo. That to me sounds a little bit off, right? It's, I'm sure it's uh, very accurate, but it doesn't have like a certain flow. That to me seems like a person that's a non-native speaker. Whereas with Heijen, Spanish translation. Hola, soy Wes. Siempre fui un gran fan de Better Call Saul. Y debo admitir que el personaje de Lalo me cautivó completamente. Again, again, not being a native Spanish speaker, I have no idea how accurate that is, but it sounds accurate, right? It sounds, there's a certain smoothness to it. I did take French for a number of years, and so when I listen to this, this also seems very real to me. Bonjour, mes chers amis. Je suis le légendaire Fantomas, le maître du crime et du déguisement. Après avoir semé la terreur en France pendant... La terreur en France. I mean, that's, I don't know, seems legit. Whereas here, it seems like they're just words that are strung together. There isn't a little bit of that, like, flow that native speakers kind of, that native speakers kind of have. I might be digging way too deep in this, uh, into this, I apologize. L'amitié est un trésor universel. D'où que nous venons, elle apporte joie, soutien et rire dans nos vies. Again, if you speak any of these languages, please let me know in the comments. Number one, do these sound real? Do they sound like that person speaking? Are they grammatically correct? Do they, do they sound like a native speaker? And which one is better? So the ones that have my face on it, that's Hey Jen, like Hey Jen, like Generation G-E-N. And this is the OpenAI's a voice engine. Last comparison. So for English, so this is English to English. This is the reading. This is the AI generated voice just reading something. This story has been told and retold for thousands of years. What is the sense? And here's English. Hey, Jen. And who are you? The proud Lord said that I must bow so low. Only a cat of a different coat. That's all the truth I know. In a coat of gold or a coat of red, a lion still has claws, and mine are long and sharp, my lord, as long and sharp as yours. And so he spoke, and so he spoke, that lord of Castamir. But now the rains weep o'er his hall, with no one there to hear. So it's interesting to me, I'm hearing like Hey Jen is a little bit better, but here they're saying that one early adopter of the voice platform, the voice engine, is Hey Jen. And saying they use voice engine for video translation so that they can translate a speaker's voice into multiple languages and reach a global audience. And it's saying when used for translation, voice engine preserves the native accent of the original speaker. For example, generating English with an audio sample from a French speaker would produce speech with a French accent. Which, again, I feel like I'm hearing that here in these audios that they provide on opening eye. I'm not hearing that, not hearing that of Hey Jen. Like, like Russian people in the comments, when I played this video a while back, I played uh, a few of these clips a while back. People have said this is indistinguishable for, from a native Russian speaker. Меня зовут Василий Зайцев, и я считаю, что «Враг у ворот» — это лучший фильм американского кинематографа. But I'm not, I'm not seeing that here. So maybe opening eyes not even showing their, their, all their cards, right? They're kind of holding it back a little bit, like, oh, it's going to have an accent. But again, if Heijen's using this engine to provide stunning quality outputs, then it sounds like it sounds like the voice engine is much further ahead. Another application they're talking about is reaching global communities. So you can, for example, with essential service delivery in remote settings. So for example, Dimaji. Dimaji is at the forefront of digital frontline solutions, and they're building tools for community health workers to provide a variety of essential services, such as counseling for breastfeeding mothers. And they use voice engine and GPT-4 to give interactive feedback in each worker's primary language. Now, this could be obviously huge, right? Going to remote places in the world, places that might not have some of the same infrastructure like we have. They might not have as many computers, for example, but they do have a lot of mobile phones, right? They kind of skip one step of the tech evolution because it was too expensive to provide, you know, desktop and stuff like that. But mobile phones are fairly ubiquitous. So you're able to do, so now anybody that has a phone can access, you know, world-class, hopefully a device for, I mean, for, for mothers from, from doctors, from various other communities in their own language. There's nothing lost in translation. So this is Swahili. And this is Sheng. So that's the reference audio. So that's a human. 
nutrition poor ina help ku make sure watu wana grow v smart kimwili na kia vitu kama fruits mboga proteins calcium na vitamins zingine mob ni essential sana kwa growth ya bones na development ya brain vitamin a ikikosa ya diet ya mkidi kuna risks mob zinaweza tokea so that's that's interesting and next they're talking about supporting people who are nonverbal such as therapeutic applications for individuals of conditions that affect speech and educational enhancements for those with learning needs I've said this before but I think AI and education is going to be incredibly powerful not just for regular ed- education in which it's going to have a massive massive effect if you know about the two sigma problem you know that the way we educate kids there's there's these like massive limitations that are built into the system not because not because of anything nefarious it's just education has to scale you know one teacher let's say 20 students right everybody has to be on the same schedule and that really limits the, the learning if you switch it to mastery learning where the kids go at their own pace and then you add some sort of for, uh one-on-one tutoring the results of those kids on like testing and homework and understanding like it improves two standard deviations so there's this like massive gap between what we know to be a, go- a better way of teaching kids and how we do it like it seems almost criminal that we don't do it but the resources required would be so great like each kid having a one-on-one tutor helping him out right that that's right that's obviously not scalable but with ai it can help and here for people that are nonverbal if they have certain disabilities that prevent them from communicating either at all or effectively i mean this certainly could help so they're highlighting livox here livox livox the artificial intelligence alternative communication app w- uh, to give voices to people with disabilities you know uh following some people online that are very pro accelerating ai eac people as they're referred to the e/acc i mean it's one of the examples there's many more other people like a lot of them are very frustrated and i understand where they're coming from about the the, the fear mongering that some people are doing in in regards to ai we've seen the neuralink patient who is a quadriplegic so he can't move uh he can't move anything below his neck right the neuralink gave him the ability to interact with computers to to play games to to write and and I'm do anything you can do on a computer uh the gpt4 with vision working with be my eyes right and i think they made some corny name for the open ai's kind of like side of oh, be my eyes i think it, they called it like be my ai's or whatever but open ai naming is is just not so good but that that's fine i think they're doing good work the point is that ai can improve a lot of lives it can save lives it can help people that are struggling potentially help people with learning disabilities be better I mean I don't know about you when I watched uh the neural neural link patient talking about all the stuff that he can do you know that that hit me pretty hard because it's like before such a big portion of your life is just kind of locked away if you can't move your if you can't move your arms and legs there's a lot you can't do but if you're able to you know telepathically like professor x professor xavier if you can manipulate things on screen telepathically I mean I'm being facetious with saying it's telepathically but the neural link allows him to look at the screen and just he says it's kind of like the force from Star Wars right he can kind of like force the the force the mouse to um to click on things and th- that allows him to do a lot of stuff both for entertainment but also for practical applications like work having some creative outlets and another use case that OpenAI is talking about here is helping patients recover their voice so i don't so i personally don't know too much about that but here's here's the technology what it sounds like so here's the current voice hi everyone this is what my voice sounds like losing open i i lose hex to speak smile so this is some sort of a neurologic speech impairment and then the reference audio when you have all of your ingredients together you are going to put the chopped broccoli and chopped banana peppers inside the And then these this is the generated audio. Hi everyone, this is what my voice sounds like using OpenAI's new text to speech model called Voice Engine. I was able to use just 15 seconds of a Oh, I see. So it sounds so it sounds like that lady before she had whatever affliction, whatever accident that happened. I had a friend that had a stroke at 30 and it's uh incredibly and it's that's that's incredibly scary and I did have a hard time I try to FaceTime every once in a while but it's incredibly difficult to understand it sometimes so having something like this if uh for example if he recorded there's you know videos of him on his phone whatever talking or whatever videos he took earlier in life those can be used to recreate a voice for him so now if I want to talk to him 
it would be easier for me to understand him if he goes to, you know, whatever the drive through he goes to a restaurant. If we ever go back to In and Out again Can together. I please have a number? If we ever go back to In and Out together again. Can I please have a number one with large fries and with a strawberry shake? Okay, I didn't get it at first, but this this makes a lot of sense. So these are like the, the good causes, right? But there's also, I mean, if you just think about it, having this technology for not necessarily good causes, but let's say cool causes, like for example, having, you know, having AI generated voices, for example, for video games, right? If you have some open world with a lot of text, you can probably create this stuff on the fly. Speaking of which, let me play a clip for you here really fast without looking it up. Who knows who this guy is? Listen to this. This is WoW Classic, right? So WoW Classic Hardcore. So this is World of Warcraft. They re-released it in its former glory. So how it existed back in 2004, 2005. And I guess this is the hardcore version, hardcore version where if you die, that's it. It's permadeath. But there are a few add-ons that people, you know, in the in the community have made that they've added to bring the game to life. So here we're approaching, you know, this is an NPC non-player character and we're asking him whatever. He's got a quest for us. He wants us to do something. So we're approaching, we click on him and normally it would just be text. It would write out text. He's like, hi there, blah, blah, blah. This is what is now. What do we have here? You look as though you might need something to keep your hands warm, HM. I'll tell you what would help. A pair of nice warm gloves. And being the kind soul that I am, I'd be more than happy to provide you with a suitable pair. There's no way I have this one is AI. condition, however. I need you to go get me some wolf meat. Nice arrangement, HM. You bring me some wolf meat. Did you catch that? HM? Nice arrangement, HM. HM is, hmm, nice arrangement, hmm. <laughs> nice arrangement, HM. And I'll make sure you don't lose any digits to frostbite. Well, what do you say? <laughs> God. Okay, okay. Okay, real talk, real talk. I I knew I knew that AI voice was like getting there. I was not aware that it was there. Um, <laughs> oh man. Okay, that's a uh, popular streamer on Twitch. You could say I am uh, co-streaming. I'm gonna guess like two people got that joke. But back to OpenAI. You know, we took we talked about the the good. We talked about the cool applications, right? I mean, gaming is one of them, but there's like a million different things where, I mean, obviously AI assisted, uh, assistance that you're able to talk back and forth with in real time is massive. We covered a, in a previous video, I already mentioned that the, where you can, you know, sales agents, AI powered sales agents can call and talk to the people, like help them, you know, answer whatever questions they have. Or if somebody wants to call in to get some sort of a uh, customer support help, you know, you're able to have that happen in real time. I mean, there's there's a million different applications, but not all of them are good, obviously, right? So the next section is building voice engine safely. And OpenAI is saying, we recognize that generating speech that resembles people's voices has serious risks, which are especially top of mind in an election year. And so people that are using voice engines today, you know, you got to agree to all the policies, which of course means, you know, we have to prohibit the impersonation of other individuals or organizations without consent or legal rights. You know, if you're putting stuff on YouTube, like you're going to get like, not a warning, but there there is an announcement where like, hey, there's certain stuff that you can't do unless you disclaim it. And specifically, like I can't generate an image, for example, of let's say a missile going towards like a real city, right? And just post that online without without you know, disclaimer saying this is not real, right? I can't generate an image of somebody in a uh, in a uh, what is it called like a lab coat giving medical advice. I don't know if you're aware of this, but it's one of those things that it's obvious when you think about it. But in marketing, very oftentimes when people are selling anything to do with you know medical stuff, right? And and there's there's laws regarding you know saying that you're a doctor and stuff like that, right? You got to be careful with that. There's no laws all around wearing a uh, lab coat or something like scrubs potentially. I mean, this is Dr. Oz, for example, when he got pulled in front of Congress to answer for some stuff he said or whatever, I, you know, he wore a suit. This is what he looks like. But, you know, on his show, he wears scrubs. So why? It's it's a costume. He shows up to work in a suit. He takes the suit off. He puts on the scrubs and goes in front of the camera. But, you know, one of the things with, with YouTube, that's one of the examples they give. Like, you can't generate a fake persona and give them credibility. So where's that, whether that's, you know, a real person, like a celebrity, or, you know, you can't get somebody doctor looking and refer to them as doctor, right? And and have him or her give you the give you the spiel about why you should buy a certain product or whatever. You just can't impersonate a doctor. There's a fine line there. If you imper if you generate some somebody like this in in a lab coat so they look like a researcher or scrubs or or having one of those steth stethoscope around the neck, like certain things like that, they they let people know, hey, I I'm a real doctor, but um 
you know, anybody can get those as props, obviously, right? So what if you're generating that as an avatar for a YouTube channel and uh, to gain credibility, like they specifically caution against that uh, and and multiple other things. But right in the open and continuous here that, you know, you have to have explicit and informed consent from the original speakers, which here's the thing. Okay. So allegedly I'm not confessing to anything. I'm just hypothetically speaking. I had a dream once uh, about this. How about that? A friend did this. They tested multiple different voice and video generation platforms to see how well they protect against impersonating celebrity voices and and celebrity videos and you know hey jen being one of the leaders they were they were pretty good about it 11 labs was good about it some of the other ones maybe not as well known not really in fact i think there's a video somewhere that i have up on this channel where where as i'm scrolling through you know all the videos i've generated you see you know well-known people on there but those ai tools they're not quite as good as like hey jen if hey jen allowed you to do that that could be a little bit more dangerous. That That's where it, it gets kind of tricky. We believe that any broad deployment on synthetic voice technology should be accompanied by voice authentication experiences that verify the original speaker is knowingly adding their voice to the service in a no-go voice list that detects and prevents the creation of voices that are too similar to prominent figures. So for a lot of these things where I had to, where I was testing, generating my voices, you, you read a statement and you read it out loud, including your name. You're saying, I authorize, blah, 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 blah. And then you submit it and then you're, you're able to do it. But of course, if they have a model of your voice somewhere, they can generate that. But the important thing that OpenAI is saying here is they're talking about a no-go voice list, right? So, you know, anybody that makes a lot of appearances or whose orders, let's say, whose commands or things they say could, you know, move markets or cause panic or whatever, or just create embarrassment. All those might have no-go voice lists where you're trying to generate something similar to that. It just gets blocked off. But for individuals like normal everyday people, this is going to be, uh, this might be a problem. I had a, a female friend of mine that I was able to generate, train the Hey Gen AI models, the video models on some of her videos, again, allegedly, you know, theoretically, whatever, but you know, I did it. And, and then once you add it to the system, you can get, you can get those people to say like, just really inappropriate stuff, just, just filthy, filthy things. As you can imagine, it's, it's, it's hilarious until it's, it's not right. Cause as much fun as I had, you know, you start thinking through some of those implications and it gets a little bit scary, right? Because all of a sudden, I mean, the scams that you would be able to do, and they're already happening where people call in, they impersonate, they're using an AI voice. The chief financial officer of some company called in and said, hey, transfer some money over here. And people are already beginning to fall for it. So it's only going to get worse. And I feel like once it gets more accessible to, to the public, once everybody can do it, yeah, they might not be able to impersonate the top tier celebrities because they're going to have their, their voice lists and their images, their likeness blocked off somehow. But you know they're going to troll their friends. You know they're going to troll their teachers. You know they're going to do all sorts of stuff. And it's probably going to get a name. We don't have a name for this yet, right? It's like Rick Rolling or whatever where you play that stupid video for people. It's the worst prank ever. But we're going to probably make a name for this, like like Doppelganger or something. Who knows? Or just Doppel, Dop. We dopped them. That's probably what it's going to be. Dop. We dopped them means to deep fake somebody and then try to cause some controversy with what they're saying. I mean, you know that kids will do this to their teachers. Employees will do this to their bosses, right? Create some weird thing and then send it to everybody. So it's going to be interesting how this plays out. And like I said, again, the first few times it's hilarious. I really enjoyed it. But, and yes, I'm, I'm very immature, but once the fun settles down, you start thinking through where this could lead. And it becomes obvious that there's multiple problems here. One is obviously tricking someone into believing something that is real when it's not. That's the most obvious problem that everyone has already thought of. And that's why I think with the elections and stuff like that, at least this time, I don't know if it's going to be a huge problem. I'm sure something will pop up. I don't think it's going to be destabilizing because I think, I mean, we all, we all saw the Pope puffer jacket, right? Before this was an AI generated image in mid journey of the Pope looking fly, right? Really like nailing that hip hop look, right? And it just, it went everywhere because it was funny because it was like, it, it looked very real. I mean, why, if it's cold, why not wear that jacket, right? <laughs> but it's just funny because of how he's walking the big cross, that hip hop look. He's kind of like, he's walking with swagger. But I think knowing stuff like this happens will keep people from just believing everything. But that's where we go to the other extreme, right? Because at some point, everybody will know that anything could be AI generated from text to videos, to images, to sounds, 
like voices and stuff like that. Then we have the opposite thing where anything that you don't like, anything you don't agree with, somebody gives you an article you don't agree with, you're like, that's fake. That's AI generated. Somebody shows you a video of an important person doing something horrible. You're like, that's fake. That's AI generated, right? Right. So it's not just about getting people to not believe what's fake. It's also to not kind of have that pendulum swing to the other side where we just don't believe anything we see. And so they're looking ahead and kind of explaining what they're trying to do. So they need to, and this is smart. They're saying we need to phase out voice-based authentication as a security measure for accessing bank accounts and other sensitive information. There's still places that do that. that that's got to go. Any sort of social engineering where people can call in, like for your, your phone company, get a, I don't even know how they do it. They get like a virtual SIM or they have a new SIM card shipped to them and they're able to just like hack everything you have because they have your phone number. They're able to retrieve your text messages. So any two-factor authentication is essentially cracked. They can restore, you know, change passwords, et cetera, right? We need some policies to protect the use of individuals' voices in AI and educating the public, kind of helping them understand what's what's real, what's not, what the capabilities are. And here they're talking about some sort of a uh, like watermarking. So techniques for tracking the origins of audiovisual content. So it's always clear when you're interacting with a real person or, or with an AI. I made this joke a few weeks ago on on one of my videos, but the more and more I think about it, it's really not a, a joke. Unfortunately, I said the way that we're all going to prove that we're human in the future is we're just going to say like, like, let's say you didn't believe that I was a real person. I would just say the most foul things imaginable, like slurs and, and, and hate speech, right? And you would know that I am human because, well, large language models, the one thing that almost all of them have in common, uh, especially any of the big successful ones like OpenAI or Gemini, Google, all of them, you know, they're really RLHF'd. They're trained not to output certain content. So if you can say that, that means, well, you're not a large language model. And of course, it can't just be a pre-recorded thing. It has to always be like new and fresh and just constantly shocking, right? So if you were around during the Wall Street bets on Reddit, that subreddit, like the way they talked, they purposely sprinkled a whole bunch of, of words and ideas. I mean, some people would find it offensive. It's certainly not, it's not safe for work. Let's say that they would be, you know, not safe for work. But that forum like really blew up because you knew it wasn't corporate, right? It was real. I think we're going to see similar things, unfortunately, with how we approach some of these AI problems. You may have seen this clip. So a lot of people were saying that it's fully AI generated walking around with all that stanky body odor here's a better uh framing of it so here's what they're saying is fully ai generated this lady that's been building up on you all day what's even crazier is that some of you are applying deodorant on top of that odor which is honest and here's kind of one of the things because people say this is ai generated a lot of people are freaking out but a lot of people don't really get what that means that's that's kind of one of the reasons why we need to get a lot of these messages out there so the wider population like the the general population that everybody kind of needs to be aware of what's happening what's real what's not so this is not ai generated or it's unlikely ai generated in the sense that this isn't like sora where you just like make stuff up and this is what it looks like so this is similar to what i've showed you with my face talking about you know talking spanish and russian and english whatever it's a real person real footage that's trained on a model to kind of replicate that replicate what they're saying that person is real they're on fiverr apparently doing voiceovers for people so somebody probably got a whole bunch of her clips and loaded up into a model now she's pitching I don't even know, like some some self-care cleaning device. I have no idea. But just like with my videos and me speaking all those uh, different languages, I mean, you can kind of tell there's a little bit of these like weird things that don't fit in. The other thing that I've noticed is if you have anything that moves or shakes in the background or or things that change, it will have a hard time. Uh, it will have a hard time replicating that. All right. So see if you can spot where the AI video generation screws up. Plus rusé et plus dangereux que jamais. Le monde so that's my finger kind of kind of clipping plus dangereux que jamais kind of clipping through my face as I raise it like this right because when I when I'm looking at the camera and talking the VA model kind of captures all the nuances of my my face the faces that I make the emotions how I say certain stuff and then also at some point I figured out that I sometimes do this right if that or or I do this where that's an expression that I do but of course if I do that in front of the camera in front of my face then weird stuff happens so here I have my two fingers up like this and it's totally cool if that is plus dangereux que jamais Le but then when i point like this it forget it it loses it so my point here is as of this recording as, as of this moment in time that made things might change very quickly with the way that ai progress is going how rapid everything is progressing but currently 
I don't think we're quite there yet where video is indistinguishable from where AI generated video is indistinguishable from reality, whether that's something like SOAR that, that, that just creates brand new images or something like this where it mimics someone. But here's the thing, already there's been a lot of fighting over this clip that went viral because a lot of people are saying, because some people are thinking it's it's AI, some people are saying, well, it's, well, no, that's, uh, she's trying to be AI. She's, it's like a TikTok thing where they're trying to do some like AI movements or whatever, sort of, and other people have their own whatever theories about it. But the point is we're getting to the point where certain, where certain clips, certain videos that don't look quite right, that look a little bit weird, we can no longer tell if it's AI or not. So we're not into the land of where AI videos are completely lifelike, but we are now, I think just in the last few months, we've crossed into this threshold where if a video is just a little bit off, it doesn't like the filter or the shakiness or the person's kind of twitching weird, you might think it's AI generated and it's real. But look at this video and tell me if you think it's, uh, if it's real or AI generated. Notice the movements, no, notice the facial expressions. Uh, I turned down the volume so it's not getting in the way because I feel like you might be able to tell if it's real or not based on the voice, how well it matches or doesn't match. But just looking at this person talking, right? It's obvious that something's a little bit off. Could it be a filter? Could it be the sunlight? Is it a fingerprint on the camera? You see the solar flares or whatever they're called. And there he goes sitting down on a bench. Is that real? Is that fake? Well, this is Heijin and they have their newest release. So this is March 27th and they're saying... This is Avatar in Motion 1.0. Make your hands, make gestures, use unique tones of voice, and HeyGen will flawlessly track, translate, and lip sync your video with any input text. And they're saying, comment for what we should make this guy say, and we'll post that video. So somebody goes, and somebody does the little, uh, what are they called? Tongue breaker, tongue twister, seashells, seashells by the seashore. And so now that we've added the voice and, um, you know, he's just kind of rattling off that tongue twister, all of a sudden you can kind of tell or it feels like you can tell that it's not real. But if you were looking at this video, let me play it again without the sound and just look at it. Like, let's say it's a it's a blurry camera or there's some sort of a that bokeh effect where it blurs the background. The question is, could you believe that this is real? And I got to say to me, without the audio, it looks very real. You're watching the future. It's all around and all real. You're watching the future. It's all around and all real. You're watching the That's future. That's bizarre. So I just checked my HeyGen account. So I do have some new features in here, but I don't think I have the walking around avatar yet. I have something called the streaming avatar, but I got to fine tune my model, which they say take eight to 12 hours. So I started that process. Hopefully I can uh, put up a video tomorrow, kind of go going over it or even better. We're going to have a special guest takeover on April first. What do you think about that? I got to be careful of stuff like that. But whatever the case is, I hope you enjoyed that. Let me know what you think. Tell me how realistic you're finding these. How good are the videos? For my videos, I didn't edit any of them. The that was just the first output and I just put it up and I was showing you, right? So there wasn't any. So if you keep regenerating it or do like multiple takes, sample multiple times and then put them together, it can look a lot more lifelike, a lot more realistic. So what you were seeing from where, where my face is talking, my avatar or whatever, that was just like the first uh, output on the first attempt. But let me know what you think. Things are getting wilder and wilder. And uh, that's it for me. My name is Wes Roth. Yes, it's me. As you can see, thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.